It has happened a few times in my priesthood where a young couple comes up to me and the newly married parents, after a couple of years, they are excited because they're going to have their first child. They feel that they have to reach out to somebody. There is a lingering doubt. They say the words, how can I, how can I be a parent to a child when I'm still pretty immature myself? I'm still pretty much a child myself. Do I have what it takes to be a good mom, a good dad? Do I have what it takes? Every life is a continuing series of such discoveries. You've all experienced it. A boy picks up a baseball bat for the first time. A young teenage girl steps on the basketball court for the first time and starts dribbling a basketball. A valedictorian nervously takes steps up to the lectern and clears his or her voice before she starts speaking. A little doubt there. But when we confront our fears, when we resolve to give all that we have, when we devote the time to learn and to practice, we amaze ourselves at our talents, our abilities, and the things we can do that we thought we could never do. That's transformation. That's transfiguration. We realize in those moments that we are in fact smart enough, capable enough, loving enough to succeed, to heal, to transform our lives and the lives of a few people around us as we go through life. Peter and his companions, they're stunned to realize the full meaning of what they're seeing. They will come down when they descend the mountain with Jesus. They will complete the journey to Jerusalem. They will complete the passion of Christ they will find their strength in Christ, in the other apostles, and in themselves. What Peter and James and John see in Jesus is his divinity, the very life of God in Jesus. And my brothers and sisters, a little bit of that spark of divinity is in you and in me as well. The passion of God is present within us, animating us to do great things that we can ever imagine doing, guiding our steps as we try to walk justly, humbly in the ways of God, enlightening our vision, with wisdom, selflessness to bring justice and the mercy of God to the few people around us. The challenge of discipleship is to allow the love of God within us to transfigure despair into hope, sadness into joy, anguish into healing, estrangement, into community. Pope John Paul II, often in his writings and in his speeches, often said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Matthew says, be transformed, be transfigured, we are not alone, for we have community to bolster us, encourage us. Just this past week, Pope Francis, while in the South Sudan, along with the Archbishop of Canterbury, 
in his homily said, we must all be transformed into witnesses of mercy. And that little bit of divinity in each and every one of us makes that possible. I remember a few years ago, standing on the very spot where Martin Luther King was assassinated. It was on the second floor of the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee, April 4th, 1968, when he was assassinated. My thought then was that here was a man who truly, truly, if you read any of his writings, truly was transformed, transfigured. Jesus' transforming experience resonated profoundly in Martin Luther King, who on the night before he was assassinated, declared in his last speech that he will ever give, he said that he was to the mountaintop and he had seen the promised land and he set aside all fear and assured his followers that even if he were killed, this is the night before his assassination, even if he were killed as a people, they will also get to the promised land. God's transformative love radiated through his face. His message was to love no matter if the other person has no response. As Jesus has taught his disciples from the mountaintop about transforming enmity through love, so King, and that last speech he gave reminded his followers to disarm police forces through loving, nonviolent confrontation and to answer fire hoses with a certain kind of fire that water cannot put out. John Paul, don't be afraid. Be transfigured. Be transformed. And so we pray. O oh Christ, the very light and word of God, may this Lent be an experience of transfiguration for each and every one of us. Illuminate our spirits that we may discover the sense of the sacred within ourselves, that little bit of divinity. May that sacredness enable us to see beyond our needs, beyond our wants, beyond our self-interests, so that we may set about to transfigure our lives and our little world, all those people around us, in your compassion, in your justice, in your forgiveness. Amen.